From the Encyclopedia of Life, this is One Species at a Time. I'm Ari Daniel Shapiro. Sometimes it's the smallest travelers who end up on the biggest journeys. And in this story, that journey is nothing less than a circumnavigation powered by biology and by business. We start with Procambrus clarki, the red swamp crawfish. Michael Robertson scissors off the top of a mesh bag stuffed with crawfish and pours them onto a sorting table. There are hundreds of them. A nice uh, sack here, all very lively crawfish. Robertson works here at Big Fisherman's Seafood, a well-known crawfish shop in New Orleans. He acts quickly to separate the live crawling crawfish from the occasional dead ones. Then he boils them in a large pot along with some garlic. Robertson fishes out a couple of the cooked ones. You just uh, peel them and eat them there. These are done. Rusty Godet with the Louisiana Sea Grant looks on. He's been studying and selling crawfish in one form or another for the last 30 years. He says that Louisianans have their French ancestors to thank for crawfish cuisine. In France, they had a long tradition of eating crawfish. And so when those French people came over here, they saw an animal, not quite the same, it's actually a different genus, but it's still a crawfish, and they knew exactly what to do with it. And they said, you're going to look good in a pot. Over time, the Louisiana crawfish industry grew, and out of the 37 species of native crawfish here, only two, the red swamp crawfish and the white river crawfish, or Procambrus zonangulus, were able to be scaled up for widespread production and consumption. Now, our journey, that circumnavigation I mentioned, gets set in motion when in the 1800s, a couple hundred years after France first stepped foot in Louisiana, the French needed help with their crawfish. The population of the native French crawfish has been decimated. And it wasn't just France. From Spain to Scandinavia, native European crawfish populations were on the decline. Rusty Godet says the reason behind that decline was yet another kind of crawfish, a North American variety of the genus Orchonectes. Orchonectes was brought to Europe uninvited, and it carried a North American fungal disease across the Atlantic the European crawfish. Once they got exposed to these North American diseases, it pulled the population down and virtually stopped the possibility of them developing a commercial industry. The solution was to introduce Louisiana's red swamp crawfish into Europe. It took Spain years to implement the introduction to verify this was the right course of action. And people are still divided decades after the introduction. To the families that are involved in the industry, it has been a godsend. It helped bring back a Spanish crawfish festival, and it's become food not just for people in Europe, but also for a number of birds and mammals. But then there are the problems, like when the crawfish burrow into dikes, riddling them with holes so that the water held inside just flows out. In addition, they will go into a partially vegetated area and they will strip it clean, like the asphalt street that's next to us. So it's not a simple... It's not black and white. It's a full spectrum of gray. Louisiana's red swamp crawfish has also been introduced into Costa Rica, Kenya, and Nigeria, with business motivating the move every time. But perhaps its most troublesome introduction, the irony of which I'll get to in a minute, has been in Asia. In the case of Japan, they actually bought the Louisiana crawfish not to eat, but to feed to bullfrogs. Side note, the bullfrogs also came from Louisiana. But anyway, the point is that the red swamp crawfish escaped. Those crawfish found their way over to China. They spread through the Chinese rice fields in a flash. And it wasn't long before China turned this new invasive pest into an export. And here's where the loop closes. Rusty Godet walks me across the street from the seafood shop into Bromart, a New Orleans grocery store. He opens a freezer and holds up two packages of crawfish, one from Louisiana and one from China. They look Are identical. Identical. It's from the same animal. The China is eight sixty nine. And the American is seventeen ninety nine. It's the same amount of crawfish. Yeah. But that cost is to get the crawfish? Process it, peel it out, freeze it, transport it, go through distribution over here, and it still comes in at half the price of ours. It has literally changed the industry because now the only thing that we have a unique handle on is the live animal. 
And so the Louisiana red swamp crawfish has taken up residence across four continents, a move fueled by the demands of crawfish eaters the world over. And it remains a vital part of culinary and cultural life here in New Orleans, right where its global journey began. Check out some pictures of those fresh Louisiana crawfish at eol.org. Our series, One Species at a Time, is produced by Atlantic Public Media in Woods Hole, Massachusetts. I'm Ari Daniel Shapiro.